Good morning, GeoDNs. This is Mike Horton, project creator of the GeoNet RTK network. Today, I am talking with Brad Stearns from South Dakota. Brad is a user of the GeoNet network as well as a deployer in the South Dakota area. And welcome, Brad. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Brad, I'd like to start with learning a little bit about how you found GeoNet. Yeah. Um, the internet's a dangerous place, I would say. Um, yeah, I found it by looking for alternatives to the uh, um, subscriptions that we were paying for, for our construction equipment, ag equipment, and survey equipment. And uh, no idea what crypto or mining or miners or deep in or any of that was. And uh, yeah, found it on the internet, ordered a couple, and here I am. Sounds good. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your business and construction and real estate? Yeah, so we do uh, land development projects. So we'll take a piece of bare ground and build it out with streets and utilities and sell off the, the lots and things. But uh, yeah, we use RTK for every step of that process. And it's been hilarious to use use GeoDNet versus all the other stuff. Super cool. Um, can you talk a little bit about why do you need RTK in construction and land management? What are some of the brands of equipment? What are some of the processes? Why do you need all this accuracy when you're doing construction and, and real estate development? Uh, number one, it saves time and money by not doing physical surveying out there. If you're grading slopes and different things, there's tolerances that have to be met. So from the engineering side of it to the actual implementation of the plan, we have to check things and can only be so far off. And uh, so, yeah, we've been using it with from survey aerial drone stuff to actual surveyors, construction equipment with grade control, and some of our egg equipment for planting grass and different things on site. How many machines do you think you have using, that have used the GeoNet network that you, that you sort of manage and control? Uh, personally, I think we've gotten at least six or eight of them on there at some point, but. Super cool. We've got a lot and of these are like on. John Deere tractors, Caterpillar machines. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I started off with uh, my personal egg Case IH tractor running Trimble, um, the RTK setup in that. And uh, yeah, we've had it on a bunch of case stuff. Um, just got them onto some John Deere tractors with 7,500 globes and uh, cat bulldozers, graders. John Deere excavator. I think it's a John Deere. Um, and then even Raven Amazing. on uh, Terragator. Amazing. So when you think about um, this precision that we provide and that we do it at a much more affordable price point, I think the first thing that comes to a lot of people in construction survey minds, it's just too good to be true. There must be some kind of something wrong with this thing. And so how have you gone out and validated the accuracy that you're seeing with GeoNet? So we've run, uh, like for example, our surveyors with the Trimble uh, VRS system, we've literally run two survey sticks side by side and uh, the GeoNet has been superior to the, to the Trimble just in that. And that's, our surveyors are the pickiest, I would say. Um, but yeah, we've run everything side by side. People that hook up to it usually call and say, what's going on? Why is this so fast and good? Amazing. Amazing. What, when you say fast, it just gets to RTK fix faster than say the existing public company networks that you've used. Yeah. And I think some of that depends on your data plan or whatever, however you're getting the, getting the corrections pulled in, but they're shocked, especially in uh, vertical accuracy. Um, the network, I'm not a technology or a technical person in this world, but it, the vertical accuracy is really shocked a lot of guys when we're doing grades and slopes and cuts and fills and all that. Super, super. I think a lot of that's because of the quality of the base stations you set up and you did the installations right. And when you have a good high quality base station nearby your equipment, it's just really hard to beat the performance of that. And that's part of what's unique about GeoNet relative to some of these traditional networks. So now you've built this network out and you're starting to actually build a business, TrueNav RTK, on top of GeoNet. You've already saved money with the network. Now you're, you're in, in growth mode. Can you talk a little bit about your plans for TrueNav? Yeah, uh, kind of a dangerous question, but I 
possibilities are endless at this point. It, uh, I've got friends, family using it, and then their friends and other family and people they know in industries that use RTK um, are calling. A guy yesterday called me and said, uh, I just about bought a $14,000 Trimble base station for my tractors, and I'm so glad my friend gave me your number because I was literally ready to do it. So Super. we're just growing and putting them up wherever we can, and people love it. Yeah, I, I see the growth and we see the usage and it's amazing. Um, I am really excited that GeoNet offers folks the ability to actually build a business on top of the service. And I think that's one of the really incredibly cool things about Web3. It's sort of a read, write, own economy and uh, it can really disrupt decentralized decentral solutions and provide um, a lot of opportunities in traditional industries like construction, survey, and farming, as well as kind of open doors and things like drones and robots. And it sounds like you're also on the frontier with drones and even looking into robots as well, too. You want to say anything about that? Yeah. Um, I got my first robot lawnmower thing the other day. And fortunately, it hasn't snowed here yet. Um, so my neighbors think I'm nuts with a, <laughs> with a robot mower going across my lawn. A lot of questions already. But it, it mows straight lines. I refer to him, a friend of mine got, I refer to it as his lawn Roomba. Um, the first ones that came out just kind of shot all over the place. Or if you wanted it to mow halfway straight, you had to bury lines. And I was like, this technology is not there. But now it is. I'm excited, especially for the Verde um, setup that, that you guys have got. And I uh, actually ordered one of the Yarbo snowblower, or a couple of them actually, Yarbo snowblower mower things. So I'm pumped. I'm having a blast. Super, super. Well, thanks so much for sharing your story, Brad. And I just want to pass on a little bit of GeoNet news as well. So I am headed down to Mexico City for the Solana APEC event, where I will be uh, on a panel with Hive Mapper and Helium and the Solana Foundation talking about DeepIn, as well as giving a talk on GeoNet and the future of robotics. So I look forward to talking about that next week, as well as having our head of GNSS on to talk a little bit about base station technology. As always, please like and subscribe, and I wish you happy mining. Mind the sky.